okay my dear students we will discuss the applications of definite integral continuing in continuation with what we have studied yesterday uh, we have studied in the integral a to b f of x dx and its application okay uh, to find the area to find the volume to find the surface area same thing is also in a different uh, we are working here now let c be the graph of a continuous function f of a f on a closed interval a b i hope you can see this uh, curve this is the curve okay now what we, we are going to do is p be a regular partition i hope what you remember that what do you mean by a regular partition is that's a partition of the closed interval a b into disjoint uh, sub intervals or non intersecting sub intervals <clears throat> now so y equal to f of x then p k x k y k uh, divides the c into n arcs you can see that n arcs p0 p1 p1 to p2 p2 to etc it goes on like this see uh, we denote it as arc p1 p2 arc p2 p3 etc now uh, okay the except at the end points the arcs are disjoint so the length of the length of the curve c from p0 to pn is this just the sum of length of this arcs. It's quite evident. If you want to find the length of this uh, curve, it is enough you find the length of this curve arc plus this 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 arc. Okay. Now, <clears throat> now you see the length of the arc PK PK minus 1. PK minus 1 PK. Sorry. Length of the arc PK minus 1 PK. If we make this sub intervals length as small as possible then this length of this arc and the length of the line segment joining pk minus 1 and pk will be the same you can see that the red color that is a straight line joining pk minus 1 and pk okay so what we are what we can see is that the length of the arc pk minus 1 pk can be approximated by the length of the line segment joining pk minus 1 and pk Therefore, L, the length of the curve is approximately equal to sigma k equal to 1 to n d pk minus 1 pk, where d pk minus 1 pk is the length of the line segment joining pk minus 1 and pk. Now, this approach, as, I, as we discussed, this approximation becomes uh, improves <coughs> or uh, 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 improves as n gets larger and larger. That means you make the partitions more and more. Now we define the length of a smooth curve. Remember that we are discussing about a smooth curve. Definition arc length of a curve. So let f be a continuous function defined on a closed interval AB. And let P is equal to x0, x1, etc, xn be a regular partition of closed interval AB. The arc length of the graph f from P A f of A to Q B f of B is limit n tends to infinity sigma k equal to 1 to n d p k minus 1 p k provided the limit should exist. L is also called arc length of the graph f on the interval closed interval AB. A function f is smooth on an interval if its derivative f dash is continuous on that interval. The continuity of f dash implies that a small change in x produces a small change in the slope of f dash x of the tangent line to the graph of f at any point x f of x. Consequently, the graph of f cannot have an abrupt change in the direction. In other ways, graph has f has no cusps corners or a smooth curve to find the length of the graph of a smooth function by integration so basically we defined earlier now uh, we will discuss uh, length of a smooth curve using the integration okay you know that limit so everything is there y equal to f of x the length of the curve being l and by the definition or previous definition l is equal to limit n to infinity sigma k equal to 1 to n d p k p k p k minus 1 p k now you know that x k p k minus 1 is nothing but x k minus 1 f of x k minus 1 p k is x k f of x k now because y is equal to f of x we can replace f of x my s k minus 1 as y k minus 1 and f of x x k as uh, y k or d p k minus 1 p k is square root of x minus x k minus 1 whole square plus f of x k minus f of x k minus 1 whole square we will apply the mean value theorem f on the interval x k minus 1 x k we see that f of because f is continuous continuous <coughs> mean value by mean value theorem there will be some c k in uh, 
and that closed interval xk minus 1 xk so that f of xk minus 1 minus f of xk is equal to f dash of ck into xk minus xk minus 1. So distance pk minus 1 pk is square root of xk minus xk minus 1 square plus f dash of ck into xk minus xk minus 1 whole square for that is equal to <coughs> square root of 1 plus f dash of ck whole square into xk, mi xk minus xk minus 1 whole square we know that xk minus xk minus 1 whole square is delta x or not delta x whole square so that is equal to square root of 1 plus f dash of ck square into delta x therefore limit l is equal to limit tendency infinity sigma k equal to 1 to infinity pk minus 1 pk is nothing but limit tendency infinity sigma k equal to 1 to n square root of 1 plus f dash of ck square into delta x now we will define the arc length that fb is smooth on closed interval ab then the arc length of the graph of f from p a f of a to q b f of b is l is equal to sigma a to b square root of 1 plus f dash of x whole square dx or f dash of x is nothing but dy by dx therefore l is equal to integral a to b square root of 1 plus dy by dx whole square dx. now maybe we can ask us, so told you, that was integrating with respect to x when we if we want to integrate with respect to y then l is equal to integral c to d square root of 1 plus dx by dy whole square into dy now <coughs> That FP a smooth function on closed interval AB. The arc length, arc length function S for the graph F is we define like this: S of x is equal to integral a to x square root of one plus f dash of t whole square plus into dt. Rather than uh, x here, the uh, rather than x is equal to b, we will take x itself. So we change the dependent variable there. So s dash of x is equal to q. When you differentiate it, the x value will remain there. A value will be a constant so that will be equal to 0 therefore s dash of x equal to square root of 1 plus f dash of x whole square that is square root of 1 plus dy by dx whole square or ds is equal to square root of 1 plus uh, dy by dx the whole square into dx or ds square is equal to dy whole square plus dx square equation 8 is called arc, arc length differential <clears throat> so now let us see the surface of revolution a surface of revolution is a surface that is obtained by revolving the graph of a continuous function about the line. For example, if the graph C of the function f on the interval a close to a b shown in figure 3a is revolved about the x-axis, we obtain a surface of revolution S as shown in the figure 3b. You see, this is that curve. You re re revolute this curve, not the area. When when you re uh, revolve x-axis about um, the area, you will get the volume. But if we revolve only this curve, we will get a surface. Surface area and surfaces of revolution. Let f be a non-negative smooth function of closed interval AB. The surface area of the surface obtained by revolving the graph of f about the x-axis is s is equal to 2 pi integral a to b f of x square root of 1 plus f dash of x whole square dx. This, this, this proof we can again, whatever we have done in the previous classes, we can apply that to get this formula so i think the procedure is same so i am just skipping the procedure i now only say the uh, formula there from equation 7 and 11 i hope you know what you mean equation 7 is 7 is this one and, uh, 7 and uh, 7 equation 7 uh, we can write s is equal to integral 2 pi it is rather not 11 but 9 integral a to be y ds with respect to y axis, this is 2 pi integral c to d d y, not as dy. Now let us see what is the work done by a constant force. The work done w by a constant force f in moving a body at distance d in the direction of the force is w is equal to f d. Work done by a variable force. Suppose that a body moves along the x axis in a positive direction from x equal to a to x equal to b under the action of a force f of x that depends on x. Suppose also that the function f is continuous on the interval closed interval a b with the graph depicted in, in the figure 4. As usual, let p equal to x0, x1, etc., x and b a regular partition of closed interval a b. We consider the small subinterval x k minus 1 x k. So assume that delta x equal to b minus 1 by a and n is so small. Then the continuity of capital F guarantees that the value of f of x at any point 
x k minus one x k do not differ very much. Therefore, if c k is any point in x k minus one x k, we can approximate f of x by f of c k for all x in cross into x k minus one x k. So that means physically f of x is approximately constant when measured over all over a small distance. Okay, the force is a constant when you are standing at a small, small, small distance. So if we assume that f of x is equal to f of ck in f of x plus then f of ck in xk minus one xk then the work done by f moving the body along the x-axis from xk minus two to xk is wk is approximately equal to f of ck delta x. So the total work done is w is equal to sigma k equal to one to f of ck delta x. Now we can see that this approximation improves as n gets larger and larger. Work done by a variable force. Suppose that a force f where f is continuous in closed field may be x on a body moving along with the x axis. Then the work done by the force in moving the body from x equal to a to x equal to b is w equal to n times to infinity sigma k equal to 1 to n f of ck delta x that is integrally to be f of x. When we derived the equation, to all, we without any loss of general, we have assuming that b is greater than rate since we are standing on a closed interval a b. Now this condition can be dropped. We once we prove this, we don't need that. Now center of mass of a system on a line. Okay. Consider a simple system consisting of two particles of mass m1 and m2 connected by a rod of negligible mass. That means the rod is the mass of the rod is never under any consideration. If you place the system on a fulcrum as shown in figure 5, this is what we call fulcrum. Thras in the varietal, as in the variable bhava. Then the equilibrium is achieved if m1 d1 is equal to m2 d2. Same thing. Where d1 and d2 are distances called the momentum between the particles and fulcrum. The quantity d m1 d1 is called the moment, uh, moment of m1 about the fulcrum. It is a measure of the tendency of m1 to rotate the system about the fulcrum. In that game, left in the left hand side, there is a tie So that the rotation is in the anti-clockwise direction. So that the quantity m2d2 is called the moment of m2 about the fulcrum. It is a measure of the tendency of m2 to rotate the system about the fulcrum. Here it will be rotating in the anti-clockwise direction. Previous, if the left hand side it will be anti-clockwise direction, the right hand side it will be clockwise direction. Balance is achieved when the moments are equal. You see, balance is achieved where the moments are equal. Okay. This is equation number 13, you remember. Now we can use the equation 13 to derive the formula for calculating the center of the mass of the system. Place the system on a coordinate plane and suppose that the coordinates of m1 and m2 and fulcrum are x1, x2 and x bar respectively as shown in the figure. You can see immediately that the distance between m1 and fulcrum is d1 equal to x1 bar x bar minus x1 and d2 is x2 minus x bar. Substituting into equation 13 we get x bar is equal to and solving it we will get x bar equal to m1 x1 plus m2 x2 divided by m1 plus m2. The numbers m1 are m1 x1 and m2 x2 are in the equation 14 are called the moments of the masses m1 and m2 about the origin. If m is a mass located at a point x on a coordinate line, then mx is called the moment of the mass about the origin. We will have the definition. The center of mass of a system of n masses on a line, on a line, that is denote a system of n masses m1, m2, etc., mn, located in x1, x2, etc., xn, lying on a line. And let m is equal to sigma k equal to 1 to n m k denote the total mass of the system. Then the moment of s about the origin is m equal to sigma k equal to 1 to n m k. The center of mass of uh, s located at uh, x bar equal to m by m bar equal to 1 by m sigma k equal to 1 to n m k. Let s denote the system of n particles with masses m1, m2, etc., m n located at a point x1, y1, x2, y2, etc., x n, y n respectively. And let m is equal to sigma k equal to 1 to n m k. Denote the total mass of the system. The moment of s about the x axis is mx equal to sigma k equal to 1 to n m k y k. 
the moment of s about a y axis is m y is equal to sigma k equal to 1 when m k x k the center of the mass s located at the point x bar y bar where x bar is equal to m y by m that is 1 by m into sigma k equal to 1 to m k x k y bar is m x by 1 m equal to 1 by m into sigma k equal to 1 to n m k y k moments and center of mass of a lamina that l denote a lamina of a constant mass density rho and suppose that l has the shape of a region r under the graph of a non negative continuous function f on close interval b the mass of l is m is equal to rho into integral a to b f of x dx that is equal to rho a where a, a is the area of the region r the moment of l about x axis and y axis are given like this m x equal to rho into integral a to b half f of x whole square dx m y is equal to rho into integral a to b x f of x dx the center of the mass l is located at x bar y bar where x bar is equal to m y by m and y bar equal to m x by m <coughs> so this is the topic that we have almost covered the part of the syllabus which i have to be i have to take to you i have covered all the uh, i try to cover all the portions please go through the textbook and if you have still have any doubt we will discuss that at some point of time as well as i wanted to tell one more thing please do all the problems and at least one uh, two problems in the exercise first two problems or first three problems in the exercise and uh, if you are not able to get an answer kind of do contact me okay i hope all of you got my series discussions and maybe we'll see again